Hello, everybody. Vision series. How are you guys? So this is Alex, and I am going to be discussing today vision series number two, which is on um, investment. So um, I know we had a conference call on this, but I think it's better we just do something like this so you can kind of see all the different things I was referring to on the call. So um, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so one of the things that we will discuss during this um, segment is not just investment in terms of money, but investment in terms of your time as a consultant, okay? So we're going to first talk about thinking like a retailer. And I have my notes here next to me so I don't forget anything. So thinking like a retailer, a lot of us have never had a business, okay? And um, most of us have been consumers. So when you start having the mind shift of having a, um, a business, things start to change a little bit, okay? So we buy things, we consume things, we know when to go to the stores to get what we need, and sometimes we even wait for something that we love to be on sale, okay? So you need to understand when it comes to thinking like a retailer, you want to put yourself in that mind shift of what do the people in the mall that own stores do during the holidays? Do they go and take a break? Do they wake up late? Do they go on vacation? No, they stay open, right? So, so I think sometimes consultants have a little bit of time, hard time thinking like a retailer because they're just, you know, they think of Mary Kay as like, a, like not really a job per se. So it's really important to really start thinking like the owner of a store would think, okay? So rather than actual merchants, you know, right here in this case, you know, you need to think like the actual um, person, not the person buying, okay? So one of the ex examples that I like to give is the example of the discounting. Now, when you discount your things, you really devalue a lot of the things in your Mary Kay business, including yourself and your products, of course. So one of the examples that we like to give for good dates to have sales is June 30th. June 30th is the end of the Mary Kay year, so we have a lot of goals. Um, another good date is December 31st or even Pink Friday. Pink Friday is really not made for you to make a profit. Pink Friday is around so you can actually have good customer acquisition. Okay. So as an example, you know, you, you discount your miracle set and only by the way to your customers. You don't do this to just anybody out there. So your customers receive these amazing discounts. So your customer that is on the miracle set, for example, may buy two miracle sets on discount. Okay, but you are acquiring her to continue, you know, using the product, you know, or maybe she um she buys something and maybe she wouldn't have bought the skin vigorous cleansing brush because it was 50 bucks and it was too expensive but she decided to buy it because it was on sale when well, now you have acquired a, a customer to be on something new maybe she bought some of the color items okay and she would have never bought that before so now you have a new customer on color so again you are now getting them on different products that they would otherwise have never bought okay so that's what pink friday is mostly about okay um also when you have these end of the year inventory clearouts, which is what you call them, you know, it's important that we, we make sure we don't provide them for just anybody, for our customers only, because other people out there, especially on Facebook, have mutual friends. Maybe they have a consultant and you're now making that person lose business because that person that is a friend with you will say, oh, I have a Mary Kay girl, but she doesn't have a discount going on. Can I buy it from you? Of course, you're going to say no. But then that person is put in a predicament of asking that person for a discount. What if she doesn't want to do a discount for her stuff? So it's kind of very touchy there. So you want to make sure you only do it for your customers and privately. Okay. So one of the things that we love to talk about is you know, when discounting counts against you or for you. So one of the uh, examples we gave on the call of discounting going against you is having the idea like a local gift shop discounting their flowers for Mother's Day. Why would they do that? <laughs> People are going to pay full price. <laughs> and that's like Apple is discounting the iPhone 7 when it comes out. Like Apple would never do that. <laughs> it's It would be really ridiculous because people are going to stand in line for it. And you may be one of those people that's like, I got to get a new phone. I got to get the new, the new the new and latest thing. They don't have to discount it. So that's that's huge. You know, that that is huge. So one of the things um, that we talked about on the call as well is start pre-selling different things. So the way you pre-sell things is by actually wearing it. So, for example, today I'm wearing the spring line from our Into the Garden, um, you know, uh, showcase. So tonight I did a makeover for one of my customers. It's one of my neighbors. Um, great customer of mine and she loves our makeup and stuff but she never really has the time for it. so we did like half her face and and so you can see the difference she loved everything she's like oh my god this is so feminine this is so beautiful so I got a great sale out of it and she's gonna give me referrals so it's all kinds of great 
So one of the other things you can do too is to invest your time in looking at trend reports. MaryKay.com, your website actually has amazing trend reports that your customers can look at. So if you don't know that it's there, that means you're not looking at your own website, right? So really important you spend that time. Um, one of the things that we also talked about was the millennials, you know, those people that are um, in their 20s right now. You know, they are relationship builders and they love to share things. So they don't go anywhere alone. They quickly identify with brands that share. So discover what you love with Mary Kay, for example, is a brand that shares. So we have YouTube channels, we create experiences with people, we create relationships. So, you know, really don't just say, oh, but you're a millennial, you're young, you're not gonna buy anything. No, you need to make sure you share with them because they love to share and they love to share with other people and that will bring you more followers. So um, an example of your investment in your time would be, you know, going onto YouTube and Mary Kay subscribing and that way you get everything Mary Kay sends out. Today, they put out a video on domestic violence, a one in four, and there was a man being interviewed. So that's a really powerful video to share to really expand, you know, uh, people's knowledge of what Mary Kay does behind the scenes. So it's really important that you plug into your own Mary Kay resource and invest your time in there as well. Okay. Um, just so you know, um, retailers this year in 2015 that just passed, um, the cosmetic industry in the U.S. alone had $60 million in sales. And almost half of that came from holiday retail sales. So why aren't you dipping your toe in that water, right? So you have to kind of like balance, okay, well, do I sleep in and not do gift baskets for the holidays? Or do I actually think like a retailer and bust my butt and do something great and really pay for my Christmas gifts in cash, for example, or it could be any holiday really. So ask yourself, are you getting ahead or are you lagging behind? You know, are you in with the times? Do you know what the latest colors are? Are you yourself practicing different techniques on yourself? Sitting still is the same as thinking, at, at, sitting still is the same as working, is working backwards. So no one wants to follow a parked car and we don't drive looking at the wind, the rear, rear view mirror, right? So why would you look behind? Why are you still lagging behind the trends? Why are you still not keeping up with the trends? You know, um, Gloria Mayfield Banks says it best, you know, if someone, someone has not complimented you on your hair in a few months, it's time to cut it, dye it, or get some more of it. <laughs> so same thing goes through your skin. Are you using the skincare regimen? Are you investing your time in your own skincare? Are you trying out the latest products? Are you, you utilizing some techniques? Like I'll give you a perfect example. I love makeup and I've always been into makeup. I'm, I actually do makeup on the side for different occasions for brides. And I learned with one of the Mary Kay videos that they put out for the spring line that the smudger brush can be used for the dark color of the into the garden palette. And I literally used it as a, with the smudger brush today. I didn't put any eyeliner and it looks like I have eyeliner on, doesn't it? It's crazy. And it's the darkest uh, color in that four palette eyeshadow with the smudger brush. And that was a technique that I learned watching that two minute video. So are you watching your videos when they come into your inbox? Are you watching the YouTube channels? You really get immersed in it, really get excited about it and trying something new. Okay. Now we're going to talk about time invested versus having a hobby. And I'm going to show you a screen share right now. So let me go ahead and open that screen share real quick. And so you can see what I'm talking about. Come on now. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, here it is. Okay. Let me move this over here. So you'll see here. Okay. It's duplicated twice, so don't worry about that. Okay. So we all have 168 hours in a week, okay? So this is a breakdown that I gave on the call. So we all, more or less, I know that we all don't sleep eight hours a day, but I'm gonna literally say that we all sleep the way that we should and sleep eight hours, seven days a week. So that's 56 hours taken away from this 168, okay? Then 55 hours is full-time job, five days a week at eight hours, plus travel time included. 10 hours you spend running errands, seven hours you spend cleaning, eight hours you spend with your children slash carpool, 10 hours cooking and cleanup, three hours for your faith, means we have a total of 19 hours left unaccounted for in a week. 19 hours for a consultant is full time. Isn't that crazy? Full time. That to me is like really, really interesting when we look at this, but we don't really know that this happens because 
we don't really plan our time well. We don't use a weekly plan sheet the way that we show. We don't really delegate our time efficiently. You know, we don't prioritize. We spend more time commenting, liking, and sharing on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram than we do on Mary Kay, and yet that doesn't bring us any money, yet we still do it. So again, it is very important that you really remember this. So take a take a little quick pause of the video, take a screenshot of this so you can see um, that this is really, really incredible, this exact, um, you know, uh, documentation that really proves to you that you can really have more time for Mary Kay. Okay, so I'm going to go over what a part-time consultant's um, business should look like, okay? So I have my notes here, so I, I make sure I say this right. So for the very part-time consultant, um, this is for you guys, okay? So if you are new, okay, this is like new or you, you work like maybe two to four hours a week or so, more or less. So your new customer's goal, okay, for your customers is to add 50 new customers to your client base in the whole year. Okay, that's only one a week. That's pretty easy, okay? Um, you add them to your preferred customer program online so you can send them a catalog every quarter, okay? If you are an overachiever, you would do 100, so that's two a week, okay? Um, imagine if you had 100 women ordering Mary Kay from you on a quarterly basis, each time they receive the lookbook, imagine that. So that would be really, really good, okay? So for the more serious part-timers, so this is like if you work six to eight hours a week or so, you want to have a goal of having a perfect start, which is 15 faces, okay, in uh, 30 days, or you can do a power start, which is 30 faces in 30 days, okay? So what does 15 faces look like? That means you do three parties, okay, with five people in each. So you have a party on a Friday, a party on a Saturday, a party on a Sunday. Each one has five people in it. That's 15 faces in that one week. Pretty simple. You multiply that by four, okay, that's 60 faces, okay, now in a month. So, so now if you're like, okay, that's a little too much, I can't do that, well, then you do one party a week. You do five faces times four weeks, that's 20 faces in the month. That's like between a perfect start and a power start, okay? Um, so if you wanted, for example, I mean, an average, I think the consultant parties usually range between 250 and $300 for one party. So, um, you know, you could be, banking between 125 and 150 bucks a week you know i think doing laundry can wait <laughs> um if you tell your husband babe should i go do laundry or should i go do a party i think he'd be really um supportive for you going to go do the party uh it's about what you do not what you say so you need to show people what you what you're doing so that way they don't really like complain or not support you because you just talk about it when you get home complaining that it didn't go well. Who wants to get home to that, right? So it's really important. You really master the skill of, you know, getting people to support you. And the only way you're going to do that is to invest your time in your business so they can then support you in that way. Um, if you're really excited, but you're still very part-time, so you're like working this business like maybe 10 hours a week or so, um, and you want to go into leadership, your first goal is to be a star consultant. To be a star consultant is non-negotiable um it's really really important you lead by example because stars drive cars okay that's what we always say like leaders are readers stars drive cars so if you're a star yourself your team will also be a star because you are leading by example so um kathy halu was actually one of our top nsds national sales director she was actually a referral um to a consultant that was a star in 1981 so she went on to marykay.com typed in her zip code or called back then and thing was like the 1-800 number she called and they asked her what what's her zip code and they recommended her ex person that lives near her in her zip code and that person that she was recommended to was a star consultant that's the only reason why kathy halu was able to get that person now that person right now must make a lot of money because kathy halu always is a national and she's still her, she still that girl makes recruitment commission off of kathy halu hello she probably banks a lot of money a month um and then kathy halu um that is something that could be really really powerful um where she can really seriously get like you can get your own kathy halu can you imagine i mean that's just crazy <laughs> That is really crazy. Um, Kathy Hulu actually um, uh, earned or won her starter kit on The Price is Right. If you don't know, don't, don't know that story, she actually didn't win a Mazda. Boohoo. And she won a Mary Kay starter kit. And then, of course, the rest is history. She went online or she went back then. She got on the phone and they gave her someone and there's Kathy. And now she's made $11 million in her career since 1981. So that's crazy. 
Um, so you want to always be at least a Sapphire star, and that's your goal for being a part-time consultant. Now, for those of you who want to drive free and your goal is to be a director, your first goal is to be um, is a team building goal, which is to gold medal. Okay, gold medal is to have five qualified or five new team members in that one month. If you want a silver medal, it's four new team members in one month, and bronze medal is three. So they don't have to be active to get the medal per se, but you know, they have to come into the business and then that way you can meddle and then let your director take care of the rest. You know, we do orientations and we talk to them about the importance of having product. So we take care of all that for you. So let us put you in a red jacket. Let us help you do that. You know, so you want to share the Mary Kay story every time you share the product, you know, give a piece of team building literature at all your selling appointments. You, know, you want to also use a team building brochure. Um, it's a section two of the order. Actually, I'm going to grab one real quick. So this is what it looks like. See, team building brochure, steps to success. And you just show this at your skincare classes. See? So it just shows you all the commissions on every level. And if you're someone that doesn't know all the facts about the company, this is great to have. It just shows you all the amazing things that you have, the car program, what comes in the kit, it's awesome. Okay, so it's really, really cool. So you can have that and put it inside somebody's bag when you give them their order. So that's really good. Okay, so that is time invested versus a hobby. Now, I'm going to show you a visual. This will kind of rock your world here. Let me change the screen here. Okay. So this is an example. Quickly, I'm going to show this of a party scenario, okay? So party scenario is your one, you have one month where you do six parties with three people in each, okay? A hostess plus two people. Let's say your average is $200. You sold by having this, okay, six parties, okay? You sold this much, six times 200 is 1,200, right? So 1,200 divided by 50%, okay, $600 in your pocket, okay? You will also be a star consultant when you do this three months in a row. So all you gotta do is have six parties, three months in a row, you're a star. Okay, now let me move this here. Let me get this to scroll here. Okay, sorry, I'm like learning how to do this. Come on, there we go. Okay, now as a senior consultant, you do the same thing, six parties, you still make the same 600, but now you have one to team two team members active working in your business, which means they place their first order, another active. You get a 4% team building commission. We're going to assume that that person came in as a Sapphire star with 1800 wholesale. You get 4% of that. So automatically off the cuff, you get 72 bucks added to your profit that you sold because you're lead by example. You now earn 672 compared to 600, right? So not bad. Okay, so now... You're going to be a star team builder, okay, which means you still make 50%. You have now three to four team members. You still make 4% team building commission. Again, we're going to assume that you had three new team members coming in as a star. Some maybe have come in 600, maybe some a little lower. So we're going to do an average of 5,400, okay? 4% 4 of 5,400 is 216. So now you made 816, not 600, and not 672, Okay. When you become a team leader, now you have 9 to 13% commission, and you get a $50 bonus on every qualified new team member, okay, after number four, or, or on number four. So again, same profit, you still have six parties, okay, 9% team building commission on three team members, same amount, okay, that's 486 plus the, the 50 bucks for the new the new people, that's a 150. Your total profit now is 1236, not 816. Can you get excited about that? I know it's crazy. When you have five ordering consultants on your team and you yourself lead by example and place a $600 wholesale order, which means you sold $1,200, instead of getting this right here, 9%, you'll get what's called 13% team building commission. And that instead of getting $486, look how much you get. $702. Insane, right? Crazy. So now you are a team leader, but you also are driving a car. How crazy is that? So same exact things, but now you have 14 people. Okay, the same thing here. This right here, the difference is that you you can add three hundred and seventy five dollars to that because if you don't take the car, you can take the cash. Pretty cool. 
Okay, then a director, look how many more lines there is, right? <laughs> you still make the same commission, okay? Now you get an extra 13% commission for being a director, a $100 bonus, not 50, and you get a unit volume bonus and additional. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna do the same thing. Most directors do more in sales, but we're gonna lowball it here. So $600 in profit, okay? 30% you get now paid on your personal order. When before, as a consultant, you don't get a percentage of your own order. Can you imagine if your wholesale order was $4,000 as a consultant? You would have gotten paid 13% on $4,000. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. So let's say again, your minimum. Most directors do more than this. So again, that's minimum, okay? 30% on the rest of your unit production, 702. You get another 30% personal team building commission on three new people, 702, because you, you can double dip on your personal unit and they're part of your unit and they're your personal, so you double dip. $100 for your three new people, that's $300. Unit development bonus, another 300. And then a volume bonus because your unit did 6,000 or more wholesale, so now you get $600. You just literally increase 300%. That's 3,283 as opposed to 1452. Yeah, pretty crazy. That's why I wanted to show this to you guys because I think it's really important to have um, as a uh, as an example because, oh my goodness, I mean, can you imagine tripling your income? That's pretty nifty. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about real quick um, social media presence, okay? I know a lot of you guys are on social media, so super important to know some things here. Let me just move this over here. Sorry, my computer is having a little technical issue. It's very slow. Okay. So for social media, you want to be interesting. People follow interesting people. Okay. So variety is really important. And this comes from Linda Tupin, National Sales Director. She's a social media um, queen. So you want to mix up your posts with some personal life stuff like church, family, kids, with, of course, some inspirational quotes maybe. And then, of course, with Mary Kay. So here are Linda Tupin's general rules of thumb to follow. Number one. One out, one out of 10 posts is a selfie, sometimes by yourself or with someone else. I'm not a big fan of selfies myself, but I can maybe take something with my nephew or with my, my other nephew or my family, or I could do one with a customer. That's fine. Number two, one out of four pictures are Mary Kay obvious. Okay, at your meeting, in front of a pink Cadillac, etc. One out of 10 is a motivational quote or meme. Okay, it could be motivational, could be a meme, something funny. Um, another rule of thumb, she says, is almost all of them are worthy of hashtag my MK life. Whenever you post something about Mary Kay or something you are inspired to do with your Mary Kay money, hashtag it with my MK life. Um, people mostly start in Instagram and then they post to Facebook. So you want to make sure you uh, get your settings correct on Instagram to post to your Facebook as well. So you don't got to go back into Facebook and post the same thing again. All you got to do is post it on Instagram and then click on Facebook and or Twitter and it posts in all three at one time, which is really nice, okay? And all your photos by themselves tell a story. So when you really look at your photos, are you just throwing up Mary Kay? You know, are you throwing up like all these plans you have? Or are you actually mixing it up so people are actually excited to view your post? Not like, oh, here she goes again, talking about Mary Kay, and they're gonna just unfollow you, you don't even realize it. So it's really important that you don't do an overkill, okay? Um, less is more, as she says, okay? So that's super simple. Uh, okay, and the last section we're going to talk about is inventory and profit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, show you guys. Okay, I'll show you guys that in a bit. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit about, um, we talked to you about a little bit about inventory and profit. A lot of people um, get confused with what to what they profit versus what they um, are taking into restocking their inventory. Okay, so here are some general rules about um, reinvestment and restocking inventory. So you don't want to embezzle from your business. That's number one. Okay, so you make 50% profit, not 100% profit. The object of um, inventory is to restock and resell. So if you have $1,000 worth of product, okay, and you sell 500 that month, you restock 250 and you profit 250. Okay, your goal is not to buy a store and then sell out because then you run out of business, you're out of business. Okay, you want to sell this much halfway and then restock half. So you're always, you know, stocked up. Imagine if Publix waited until all their baby food ran out. Would you go back? No, <laughs> you would not. And they would not have a business. Um, one of the things that we talk about is to use a 60 40 split. And handling your money, not 50-50. And it's important to know, you know, you are in business for yourself. Therefore, you need to treat it as such. But it's important to know how that works. So, for example, um, 
if you buy 100% is bought, okay, along with the tax, 50% always goes to restocking your inventory. Some people, what they do, and I've talked about it in other videos, is 10% allocated for business expenses. So for example, your meeting dues, whether you pay for the month card or not, uh, your section two supplies, if you ran out of um, cotton pads, you ran out of customer profile cards, you ran out of facial cloths or whatever it is. Um, what you could do too is take that 10% and put it towards having a little savings account for your Mary Kay events or for life seminar. So it's really important to know where that money is going, okay? So one of the things you can do is you take 40%, okay, profit, which is what's left, okay? And you put it in your pocket. But some people, what they do is they take 50% and they restock 10% for business expenses like section two and like business stuff, meeting dues. And then they profit 40%. But then they, what they do with that 40% is they split that in two. Because most people have Mary Kay as a part time job. You're not like starving and like homeless, God forbid. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're, if you're okay, you can play this game with yourself here. Okay. So you take that 40%, you split it into two pots. This 20% right here, you pay yourself you go to Disney, whatever you want to do. This 20% you save for Mary Kay events and for life seminars. So that way you never have to tell your director, I don't have money to go to career conference. How do you not have money to go to your conference or your own business? Can you imagine? I mean, that's just important. It's a non-negotiable really in my book. I mean, I've never missed an event, you know? So it's really, really important. Okay. Um, a lot of times what you want to do as well is you, some people, I know some people that want to pay off their inventory investment first. So I had someone that did that. They made their investment back in two weeks. So they paid back their credit card first and then they profited after that. So that's also an option. It's not a bad thing to have a loan for your Mary Kay inventory because you have a responsibility. You have accountability to something. You know what I'm saying? You actually have to pay that every single month. You know that bill's coming. It puts you in check. Like, oh my God, I got to sell this stuff. I can't just sit back and watch Netflix all night. I have to go book. So it's important to have that accountability so you can stare at the product and be like, oh my God, I got to move it. So that's really, really important as well. And that's, I mean, that's pretty simple stuff. Okay. So I really hope this stuff helped. And um, I really wanted to give you a little extra something to kind of um, go on. And I want to give you some hope as to some of you guys that maybe are like not utilizing some resources from your business. And I want to kind of show you this to kind of end our, our call. And we talked about it a little bit on the conference call, but I want to show it to you in case you haven't seen it yet. It's also on Stephanie's website and my website. So really important here is um, you really want to really feel like you know, your business is working for you and you're not working harder, you're working smarter. So these ice cream cones represent parties, okay? So if you have five parties in one month, okay, imagine that this like thing that we're looking at right here with all these little happy faces and smiles and hearts, imagine that's also duplicated here, 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 and here. So we just don't have the space for it, but this kind of gives you an idea. These smiles are happy clients. The hearts are happy new family members, which means they join your team. And the sun is the sunshine people, the happy people who, who brought you sunshine, um, but they didn't buy anything, but they gave you referrals. So as an example, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but as an example, your first party, you had two people. Okay. So now you have two happy clients. They bought from you. Okay. That's it. But they gave you referrals. So then you had a party with this person and guess what? She was a happy client. She referred you five people and this person signed. This person referred you somebody that, that signed and that person recruited someone that signed. You see this person, this party over here booked and she had six friends or five friends. These two didn't buy anybody, didn't buy, but gave you referrals. These two signed, this one bought and that's it. Okay. Then you can see how this sunshine right here, the one that didn't buy, she booked a party to get, to get free product. Look what happened. She recruited something. She, you recruited someone from that party. And it goes on and on and on and on. I think I kind of like 60 new team members came from this one party. 60, guys. To earn the B is 24. Like, that's insane. <laughs> so I really do hope that really makes sense. And I really do hope that this um, really gives you a, a good view of everything. And, um, you know, I, I hope that this really puts you back into the perspective of a retailer, thinking like a retailer, and really gives you that idea that imagine you have a whole entire pot of cash on your table, on your kitchen table, and it's sitting there, and you just like leave it there, and you don't use it, and it just sits there, and then someone comes and just throws it away. Can you imagine that happened? You had all this money sitting there, and just someone just picked it up and just threw it away. That is exactly what you're doing. You don't book from your bookings and you don't book parties. You are literally leaving thousands, if not millions of dollars, potential dollars 
on the table. So think about that. All right, guys, have a great night. Bye.